Non-invasive ventilation is a method of providing positive pressure ventilation without the use of an artificial airway. The primary goal is to avoid intubation. To do so, this form of ventilation uses different types of interfaces or masks in order to secure a link between the patient and the machine. And that is exactly what we are going to talk about in this video. So if you're ready, let's get into it. As we just mentioned, with non-invasive ventilation, since there is no artificial airway, this reduces some of the complications that are associated with conventional mechanical ventilation. You should know that there are two primary types, BiPAP and CPAP. We cover the differences between these two in other videos on our channel, but for this one, we're specifically focusing on the different types of interfaces that can be used with this form of ventilation. So what is an interface? These are just the different types of masks that the patient can wear in order to receive this type of therapy. Having an interface that is properly sized, well-fitting, and comfortable for the patient is crucial when it comes to the success rate of non-invasive ventilation. Now let's talk about the different types of interfaces. First, there is the nasal mask, which covers only the nose. It's the most common mask worn with CPAP in patients with sleep apnea and is typically tolerated well by most patients. Since the mouth is not covered with this type of interface, the biggest issue is leakage through the mouth for mouth breathers. It also can cause nasal dryness and nasal drainage in some cases as well. Then there is the oronasal mask. It covers both the mouth and nose, but otherwise functions basically the same as the nasal mask. With this interface, since the mouth is covered, it provides a better seal and leakage isn't as big of a problem. However, aspiration and regurgitation can be potential problems with this interface. Another potential problem is asphyxiation if the machine, electricity, or gas source were to fail. But most masks of this type have safety valves to prevent this from occurring. Next up is the nasal pillows. These are prongs that are inserted into the nose. This one resembles the nasal mask, but it is actually much smaller. This is a common interface in CPAP therapy and would not be recommended for BiPAP. Since this is the smallest interface, it's typically the most comfortable as well for most patients. However, some complications include nasal congestion, dry mouth, and nosebleeds. As with the nasal mask, gas leakage through the mouth is also a potential problem. And then there is the full face mask. This one covers basically the entire face. It's the largest interface for non-invasive ventilation, which means that it's also the most uncomfortable for most patients. A full face mask is typically indicated when there is significant mouth breathing by the patient. This often occurs during an acute exacerbation of COPD when a patient is working hard to take in as much air as possible. Because it covers the entire face, it usually can provide a better quality of ventilation in terms of improved minute ventilation and blood gas results. However, as previously mentioned, patient comfort is a huge factor when it comes to selecting which interface to use. Because if the patient is uncomfortable, they likely will not tolerate wearing the mask and will constantly try to adjust it or remove it altogether. This means that, as a practitioner, you're not going to get the desired results for the patient. For example, even though a full face mask may provide better results, it could make some patients feel claustrophobic. Therefore, an oral nasal mask would be a better option. Again, minimizing leakage, patient comfort, and selecting an appropriate size should be your top priorities when selecting an interface for a patient during non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Keep in mind that some leakage is unavoidable. Even though this is the case, the amount of leakage should still be monitored. Thankfully though, most machines are designed to compensate for leakage up to a certain point. If there is too much leakage, the patient likely isn't going to receive an adequate tidal volume. We created this video to provide you with a quick overview of this topic. 
we could dive even deeper into all the specifics of each type of interface. If this is something that you're interested in, let us know down in the comments section below. Real quick guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well because we have a ton of other videos on our channel that I think you will enjoy. Just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. And if you want to dive deeper and learn more about this topic, you can go to respiratorytherapyzone.com where we have a ton of free study guides, practice questions, and other helpful resources. I'll drop links to everything you need right below this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.